What's up, everybody? I'm Nick Kniper, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about Stamps.com and why I think it's a great buy right now and overall a great company for you to trade in. So just a quick overview of Stamps.com. They've been around since before the internet bubble in the 90s, and basically what Stamps.com has done for most of its business uh, career is uh, it's a subscription-based service that uh, retail customers, so imagine you wanted to uh, print postage online for Christmas to ship to ship gifts to your friends and your family. You go to stamps.com, you could buy a subscription, then you could print postage online. And um, that was the business for, for quite a long time. Um, the business actually had problems for, for a, a while, and it's because it's had such high churn rate. Because if you think about it, you know, I may need to just use this service every once in a while, and then I'm going to unsubscribe. So they really kind of were a, a stock that not very many people talked about and kind of didn't really do much for uh, quite a long time. And then in 2014, they made a big acquisition of a company called ShipStation. Uh, basically, ShipStation is a software for e-commerce companies to be able to um, ship their products uh, very easily. Basically, orders get fed in. You're able to pick the, the cheapest way to get it to the customer in the speed that they need, whether that's UPS, USPS, or FedEx. Um, so basically, it's the kind of back-end fulfillment for e-commerce companies. And so ShipStation made this acquisition in 2014. Then they acquired another uh, company called ShipWorks in 2014 as well. So basically, Stamps.com made a big transition from um, kind of catering to retail customers that only need their service every once in a while and started focusing on um, businesses that are constantly shipping out goods, um, uh, e-commerce businesses. and. Um, very smart play by stamps.com because these businesses are shipping out way more, way higher volume. Stamps.com can make more money. And then in 2015, they made a massive acquisition, you could even call it a merger, of Indicia. And basically, Indicia is a postage reseller for USPS. So, ShipStation, before all of these acquisitions, uh, acquisitions, ShipStation had Indicia and Express as the way for you to be able to ship through USPS. Um, so basically, Stamps.com made this acquisition for them to uh, get kind of a, a vertical uh, alignment. So basically, now they're making money not only off of selling software to be able to for e-commerce business to be able to ship their goods, but now they sell the and, and resell the postage that these customers use. So it was very smart acquisitions um, all around. So I'm going to hop over to this Word document where I've kind of written up the different reasons why I think stamps.com is a, is a monster stock to invest in. I think it could potentially double its value in the next year, especially if they do the things that I think they're going to do, um, continuing their, their successful mergers and acquisitions. So first and foremost, simply due to the name, stamps.com is misunderstood by many investors. Um, a lot of people are just saying stamps.com, you know, why is this company worth a billion dollars? And you can use that to your advantage. I mean, that's why the stock's actually kind of undervalued is a lot of people uh, don't understand what stamps.com is actually doing. And even companies that maybe were f familiar with stamps.com in the past haven't realized this massive transition that they've made in their business model to catering towards uh, businesses. So that's one reason right now why stamps.com is, is quite undervalued. And then uh, another massive reason why they're undervalued is this completely sham hit piece um, by Capital Forum in uh, Presidents Point. And I really think it's just a sham piece that was kind of funded or, or at least heavily pushed by their competitor, Pitney Bowles. And so I'll actually, uh, I'll jump into right now. So, so basically, Pitney, uh, Presidents Point and, uh, and Capital Forum basically said that um, Stamps.com was doing really shady stuff and they were arbitraging the, the price of postage between the the customer and USPS and that USPS was going to hate this when they found out and was going to cancel, um, you know, it was going to cancel their contract with stamps.com. And, and so the stock has really plummeted and it hasn't actually recovered from its highs since then. 
So I think it's really important before I hop into just uh, other reasons why I think Stamps.com is a great stock to really kind of dispel this, this sham article by President's Point. So I'm going to tab over and um, right here is a slide. You can find it on President's Point's website where they basically go into the details of why um, why they think stamps.com is doing shady stuff and why it's massively overvalued. They actually have a price target on stamps of $15, which is absolutely ridiculous. I would love to buy it at $15 because the company is worth way more than that. So it, it's actually kind of sad because it looks like President's Point and Capital Forums, although, uh, although they say that they really did their research, I really don't think they did their research because a, a guy like me, I, can, I have an e-commerce background. Um, I have a, a startup called Electric Styles that I founded with some friends in 2012. So I'm very familiar with this space. And so it's kind of sad to see that this level of ignorance can hurt the stock of a company and, and no one's really come out and, and just knock them for this, this absolute sham space. So we're just going to go through each of their kind of claims one by one and just dispel them. So uh, first and foremost, it says the you know the first point says Capital Forums research was extensive. It interviewed a lot of industry experts, including very senior government officials with oversight over USPS, and even interviewed someone from Intuiship. Uh, basically, what they're saying is that um, that uh, you know they interviewed a bunch of people to make this whole piece. Um, I, I haven't really looked into that claim too much. I mean, I'm more looking at what they are saying in their claim. Um, and, and first of all, I completely agree with what Stamps responded. They said Pitney Bowles uh, put Capital Forum up to it. I completely agree. I, I, I actually think that Capital Forum and President's Point were bought out by um, or, or were paid by Pitney Bowles to put out this sham article. And if you want to know why, just simply look at Pitney Bowles stock and how it's plummeted and how Stamps.com stock has skyrocketed. And it's simply because Stamps.com is making better business moves than Pitney Bowes. And now they're mad about it and they're trying to you know, hurt the stock of their competitor. So let's go into the, the meat of it. So point two, companies such as Stamps.com are potentially taking advantage of the USPS reseller program. So um, first of all, that's just absolutely not true. Um, Indicia, so, so none of this really is stamps.com. It's the acquisition of Indicia. That's the quote unquote problem. Indicia and Express One have had their agreements with USPS in place for over four years. I, I use these, uh, both of these uh, services in 2012, way before stamps.com acquired ShipStation and way before they acquired Indicia. This has been going on for a very long time. The USPS is fine with it. There's, there's no real problems with this at all other than Pitney Bowles is trying to make a sham piece. So let's let's look into President's points like research. They say, how can it be that Stamp reports massive ARPU, so that's average revenue per user synergies each time it acquires a company? Uh, Stamp is taking volume from low volume shippers without a huge postage discount and putting that same volume through Stamps.com and now receiving the high volume shippers discount. Okay, so first of all, yeah, uh, the average revenue per user is going to go up when they acquire synergistic companies. Let, let's look at their ARPU. In 2013, okay, so this was before the acquisition of ShipStation. This is when they were just dealing with retail customers and they were charging them around $20 a month. Let's look at the monthly ARPU. $20, $20, $20, $20, seeing a trend here, right? Let's go to 2014, $20, $20 roughly, right? Q3, we see a jump. In Q4, we see a jump as well. Why is that? It's because they acquired ShipStation and they acquired ShipWorks. So if you go to stamps.com and you look at how much they were charging their customers, it was roughly around $20 a month. So it makes sense that they, their ARPU was in that range, plus whatever they were making on the postage. But it makes sense why it was in that range. Now go to stamp, uh, shipstation.com, go to shipworks.com, see how much they charge every month. It makes sense that with these acquisitions, the ARPU is going to go up because the average user for ShipStation is getting charged around $70. So as ShipStation grows and as ShipWorks grows, what would you expect? The monthly ARPU is gonna continue to go up. 
And since stamps.com is, tradi uh, is transitioning away from these retail customers where, where they were at $20 a month and they're growing ship station and they're growing ship works, that ARPU is going to continue to go up. It, it's pretty like makes sense. It's pretty like, you know, common sense here. This isn't rocket science. So let's go to 2015 and we'll see that that monthly ARPU is kind of steadily increasing, steadily increasing. And then in Q4, we see a big jump to $35. And then in 2016, we see a massive jump to $40 and a massive jump to $42. Why did this happen? It's because of the acquisition of Indicia, right? So uh, I'm going to do it with my hands. It may be weird, but okay. So for example, Shopify is a very common e-commerce platform. So what happens here is Shopify, an e-commerce website like Electric Styles, my company, has Shopify, and that's where you that's your front end, and that's where you get all your orders. You pass all of your orders over to ShipStation, right? So this is how they were making money in 2014, 2015, is they were charging companies a monthly fee to use this software. In order to ship the goods, I, I as an e-commerce owner have to now decide on each order, do I ship UPS, do I ship FedEx, or do I ship, guess, Indicia or Express One through USPS, okay? So it makes perfect sense that when um, st stamps.com now owns Indicia that they're making money on the software and now they're making money on every single order that goes through Indicia through their platform. This is why they made the acquisition because they know that they are vertically aligning their business and they're making a lot of money doing so. Here's a perfect example. Okay, so if you are a grocery store and you sell, let's say, steak or you sell dairy products at the store, right, and you mark it up 50%, okay, well then your average revenue is gonna be, you know, at this level. Now what if you go and you acquire the dairy farm? Your ARPU, the amount of money that you make off of each transaction for your dairy products is gonna go up because now you own more of the pipeline. It, it makes perfect sense. And um, this, once again, this has been going on for a very long time. Uh, Express One isn't owned by stamps.com, it's still an option you can use to ship on ShipStation. It's another postage reseller. So it's really odd that, you know, President's point isn't is just hitting stamps.com when there's a plenty of other resellers that are that are still doing this. This is fine. Obviously the USPS has been fine with this for four years. Why would they have a problem with it now? So let's go back to um, their point. So so this really addressed point two. Why is the ARPU going up? Because they're making synergistic acquisitions. They're transitioning their business model to a B2B business and they're vertically aligning their acquisitions. And so they're making more money off of each customer. It's absolutely common sense. Stamps.com usage of the reseller program is potentially abusive. This is point number three. Resellers are being used by Stamps.com regardless of cannibalization impact on USPS. The program is abusive. No, it's not. Go to Express One, which is a postage reseller, which is not owned by Stamps.com. They very clearly say on their website, and they have since they started the agreement, USPS is allowing them to target lower volume shippers. It's allowing them to target lower volume shippers. Same with Indicia, same with Stamps.com. Look into the fact that Indicia and Stamps.com have very long, very good relationships with the post office. They are in business together. They are working together. This is a synergistic partnership. Um, Point number four, the USPS will find fault with the reseller program if it is cannibalizing existing USPS volume and could terminate with 30 days notice. Read the agreements. And DC is allowed to do this. Express One's allowed to do this. There's no problem here. This is all bogus. The ARPU spike. President says the ARPU spike is evidence. No, the ARPU spike is evidence that Stamps.com made a great acquisition by acquiring Indicia. And now they have aligned um, they make more money off of the, the whole pipeline of the customer. This is a, a smart business play. It, it, there's there's no evidence here. This is just a smart business move. And DC has been doing this for over five years. Express One has been doing this for over five years. It only became a problem when Pitney Bowles realized that Stamps.com, with acquiring ShipStation and with acquiring Indicia, is going to crush them in business. And so they paid these guys to put out a sham article. Stamps.com's acquisition spree and resulting 
vertical integration enables stamps.com to extract a greater portion of postage resellers revenue. This is hilarious. This is literally hilarious. Reading through key pieces of stamps.com litigation proves that stamps.com used its increased scale and negotiating revenue, revenue or negotiating leverage to make more money. Wow, really? Really? So if you grow bigger in scale, you can extract a better price? Look at Amazon.com. They have the best price in the world with UPS, with FedEx, and USPS. I don't, I don't see President's Point putting out a hit article on Amazon.com saying that it's bogus that since Amazon has consolidated through very aggressive acquisitions, pretty much half of Americans' e-commerce business, that that's somehow wrong. That's how business works. As you grow in scale, you can negotiate better prices. I, this is just absolutely ridiculous that this is an argument. Um, and then it and then it just continues on, continues on, just saying you know ridiculous, bogus stuff. This whole article is bogus. Talk to someone in e-commerce. E Talk to someone that's been in e-commerce, runs an e-commerce business, and has used ShipStation for years, and they'll tell you that this none of this makes sense. This is a just a hit article. It literally is just a hit article. So now that we've dispelled this absolute myth that has, I think this is probably shaved off maybe 50% um, at one point in time, 50% of uh, stamps.com value, it, it makes it a great time to get in and and go long on this business. So I guess I should say thanks to President's Point for putting out this bullshit article, knocking their price down so I can get a great deal on this stock. So let's, um, let's hop over to this document. Um, so, so that, that sham piece really, really took the, the price down of, of this company. Um, the really interesting thing is that when you look at what stamps.com is doing, they're, they're doing, a, they're, they're doing a very, very powerful thing. Um, there's, there's two sides to kind of, I mean, there's a lot of facets of e-commerce, right? But there's like two kind of clear sides to e-commerce, right? So, uh, one is the, the acquisition of the customer. So you can put Shopify on that side. You can put Square on that side, right? So Shopify allows small to large businesses to easily run a website online to take transactions. Um, Square is a company that actually processes these transactions, right? So you could put companies like that on the uh, consumer acquisition kind of side of e-commerce. And then on the other side is, is the consumer fulfillment side of e-commerce. So that's so one side is how do you acquire the customer? The other side is how do you get the product to the customer? And that part is just as important. Um, and there's a lot of money in that part. Just look at uh, the you know shipping costs. Just look at what Amazon did with Amazon Prime, right? Uh, making that fulfillment cheap and easy and fast to get the customers. It's, it's a very powerful part of e-commerce. And Amazon has a very dominant kind of hold on it right now. Uh, so it's great to see companies like stamps.com uh, really starting to compete there. So um, stamps.com by acquiring ShipStation, by acquiring ShipWorks, by acquiring ShipEasy, by acquiring Indicia is becoming a big part of the e-commerce fulfillment side of the equation. Um, and there's a lot of money to be had there. So it's really interesting that when I look at companies like Shopify and I look at companies like Square, um, and I see their their market cap and how big they are, and then I look at Stamps.com and and see that the, the it doesn't seem like Wall Street's really understanding that this side of the equation is is very powerful and very important for e-commerce, and there's a lot of money to be made uh, doing it. And I think it's partially because that side of the business isn't really sexy. You know, Shopify sexy. It's software as a service. Like it's front end. You can see hundreds of thousands of businesses using it. Um, you can see hundreds of thousands of businesses, if not more on the fulfillment side, but it's just not as sexy. And I think that's another reason why this stock um, is is devalued. Um, so if we go over and we look at 2016 and we see stamps.com has a massive EBITDA EBITDA, I can never say it right, but right, they have a 45% margin when it's all said and done. That's massive. In quarter two of this year, they made 38 million. I'd say quarter three, quarter four, you know, just pulling numbers uh, loosely out of my ass. If I look at their EBITDA here, we should see some massive growth, almost double probably. Okay, so I would assume that they've done 
almost $80 million in, in pure profit, um, they'll finish the end of the year over $200 million, if not more. So if you believe that the fundamentals of this business isn't in jeopardy because of the President's Point article, which I've just dispelled, and you see the not only the, the great uh, the great amount of profit that they're generating right now, but if you really understand the vision of their strategy and how they've executed it over two years, right? Or two years ago, they were at 13 million in Q4. And this year they should be, uh, you know, maybe close to 50. So an almost five times increase in their profit in, in two years. It, it's an incredible testament to how they are executing their business very well. But more importantly, um, what it means is they have a lot of cash coming in. And they're going to use this cash to continue to make acquisitions, I think, on the fulfillment side of the business. So if you understand uh, e-commerce fulfillment, there's, there's two real options as a company. One is you can do the fulfillment yourself. And the other is you can use what's called 3PL or third-party logistics. Basically, you can pay someone else to store and ship the posted or store and ship your inventory for you. Um, right now, stamps.com is consolidating very well um, with, with software on, uh, on the self-fulfillment side of things. So, um, so basically, you know, running your own warehouse or shipping out of your, you know, your apartment or whatever you're doing. Um, they really haven't touched the uh, third-party logistics side of the equation. And I think more and more businesses are looking for turnkey solutions, especially newer companies coming on up. My, per, uh, my company, Electric Styles, we've used third-party logistics uh, since we started out. Uh, we actually use Amazon. So we ship our inventory to Amazon. Not only does it sell on Amazon, but we actually ship like our website orders from Shopify. We send it to Amazon and they ship it out. But guess what we use in the middle? We use ShipStation to uh, send the inventory over there. Um, because ShipStation is still a very important middleman thing. It allows you to adjust order information. Um, it allows you to pick the right speeds. There, there's a lot of technology there that you need. So it makes sense that if they're if they're looking at kind of really vertically aligning here, they've already noticed that a lot of ShipStation uh, business, yeah, it's going to UPS, yeah, it's going to FedEx, and yeah, it's going to USPS. So any company doing that is running their own warehouse running on fulfillment, but they're also probably noticing um, a lot of orders going to Amazon, and they're probably noticing a lot of orders going to uh, a company like um, Shipwire. So Shipwire is a very popular third-party logistics system uh, in the United States and in the UK, and, and maybe even Australia and some other countries. So what I predict is that uh, stamps.com is going to continue to try to make acquisitions on that side. And a big acquisition they could make would be acquiring a company like Shipwire that would allow them to cater to um, a huge segment of the market that they're not catering to. Now, the downsides of this acquisition would be that uh, their, their costs would definitely go up because they wouldn't just be printing, you know, postage. They wouldn't just be printing, um, you know, they wouldn't just be like selling software. But I think that it's very important because this will also allow them to make money off of uh, UPS and make money off of FedEx. Once they own their own third-party logistics system, not only are they going to get a lot more customers, um, and not only can they kind of just integrate that whole fulfillment pipeline, which is massively powerful. Once they do that, it's massively powerful. But now they can start making money off of every shipment that they send to UPS and every shipment that they send to FedEx. How are they going to do this? Well, when they are able to consolidate all of these merchants' inventory, like for example, Shipwire does this, when you're able to consolidate a bunch of companies' inventory and you're the one shipping it, you can negotiate very, very good rates with UPS, very, very good rates with FedEx, and you can make postage stamp arbitrage off of both of these. And this is what Shipwire currently does. Amazon currently does this. And just to go full circle, that's so funny why President's Point is trying to say that uh, that Stamps.com is, is sort of doing something wrong by um, arbitraging postage to the USPS when it's, when it's common throughout the industry. 
So what, what I see with, just in summary, what I see with stamps.com is a, a very smart acquisition strategy, uh, a healthy business that's growing rapidly. They have a ton of cash coming in and they're gonna use it to continue to make more acquisitions in the fulfillment side of e-commerce. Um, I just saw that I think Goldman Sachs says that e-commerce is gonna go 22% a year. And so there, there's huge growth for stamps.com. They're making a lot of money. I love their executive team. Uh, just seeing their execution in the past couple of years. Um, and then, you know, you couple all of that, that future growth, um, those future acquisitions, all of these great plays, and then you couple that with the fact that their stock's hugely undervalued as is, as it currently is, they're probably 50% of the price that they should be, and this stock's a no-brainer. I think it's going to double in a year. I think it could triple, quadruple in three to five years as they continue to make... Um, uh, or maybe even two to three years as they continue to make really good acquisitions in the space. So anyways, that is um, my my summary on stamps.com. Just full disclosure, I am invested in this company. I'm long in this company. I will not be taking out any shorts or any puts on this company. Uh, I'm already long and I plan on buying a lot of call options in this company because I think that I'm going to make a lot of money doing that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please follow me on StockTwits. My handle is at N Kniper, so at N K N E U P E R. And follow me on Facebook, follow me on YouTube, and I'll continue to post videos.